Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Local Pundit. I'm Josh Anthony. This is your match day preview for Grinsby Town versus Wrexham AFC. Yes, it is a Friday night show, and it is a match day preview. As you can see, it is grim ready. Yes, we are ready for Grimsby Town, and that is on there on the thumbnail because I was reading some of Parkinson's uh, uh, pregame chat chatter uh, on both uh, the leader and at the interview from the Wrexham uh, from the Wrexham um, <clears throat> uh, website. So I thought it'd be very interesting <clears throat> to dive into some of uh, to some of his comments and see what that would be like. Uh, yeah, just just to dive into a little bit too. It's been an interesting week. It's been a very interesting week and a fun week uh, on the show and the channel and growing a bit and uh, talking to some other people. So, anyways, it's Friday night. It is Friday night. It's five five. Uh, yeah, it's five o'clock here on Friday, and uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a relaxed show. So, get involved, like, share, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Um, you know, obviously. Um, we are on our way to, well, we're hoping to be on our way to 500. We have, we have not, we're not stalling. We're on our way. It's like, we're, we're just literally, and I say it all the time. We're just army crawling to that 500 mark. Um, so, uh, if you can subscribe, if you haven't, and, um, you know, I, I appreciate everyone's support. So, but it's been really, really fun. Uh, again, before we get into the show, tomorrow is going to be a big day. Tomorrow is a big day when I get through some things on that. So this is obviously we're doing this here tonight uh, and prep for tomorrow's show. Tomorrow is Super Saturday. I've been calling it Super Saturday. It's the kickoff to this eight game, to the eight games that we're going to have to at the end of the season. And there's a lot to, there's a lot happening. In the morning, early doors, about 5, five o'clock, 5.15, I think it is, the Mansfield game. Uh, let me get this up because I just might as well do it the right way rather than do it the wrong way. Uh, the Mansfield game is tomorrow morning. Uh, and that one kicked Mansfield versus uh, what the f? Uh, one second, one second, one second. Yeah, I, I wish I did this. Up. Mansfield versus Colchester. Sorry about that. Mansfield Colchester game kicks off uh, the first game overall. Uh, first game overall is Mansfield Colchester. That's the early doors game for me. That is, and everyone. Uh, so where is this? Why is this not working? Uh, whatever. All right, Mansfield kicks off tomorrow morning uh, at, uh, at at five fifteen, and they're playing uh, Colchester. We are the game after that. Obviously, we're doing a watch along for that. Wrexham versus Grimsby. Grimsby versus Wrexham. And the game afterwards is Stockport uh, versus MK Dons. And MK Dons are going to go are going to be playing a, a role in uh, everything that's happening in this league. It's going on. Even in Kieran, how you doing, buddy? Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Kieran's in the house. Uh, Kieran does not sleep. Christ, he does not sleep. I love it, man. That's awesome. Um, good to see you, brother. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, uh, that the Stockport game is after our game, and both those games in the United States. Are uh, on on um, or on ESPN Plus, which plus, which is weird because our game, the Rexon game, is not. It's on iFollow. So whatever. So there's three games tomorrow that are happening. I'm gonna wake up early and I'm gonna maybe get on a little bit early for um for the uh, for the Mansfield game, but I'll, it'll be on the Rexon uh, Grimsby Town stream. Obviously, we're gonna do our stream. Then afterwards, there is the post ninety with the with the with everybody um, with everybody with the Brett Horde and Race Course Ramble. Drop a like on all of those guys too. Go follow those uh, Race Course Ramble uh, Matt over there and um, and uh, Sean at the Red Horde. If you haven't, uh, big community we're growing on we're growing here. Uh, so go drop a like on them. And I think it's uh, Dazzle and uh, the other lads as well and the Welsh Beast. So go, um, so go drop a like on that. So that's the post ninety. Then right after that. Uh, we'll be involved in uh, – we're going to do another watch-along for the Stockport MK Dons game. What I'm thinking about is jumping back and forth. Uh, maybe we'll have one of the other one of the other regulars get on and uh, control the channel too. We can all just go back in and, and uh, you know, on our channel, their channel, whatever it is. Wish we could have one big watch-along, but wasn't able to work out, so that's fine. So we will definitely be doing a watch-along for that, but mainly tomorrow, the Rexon game versus Grimsby Town. Uh, we'll be here and we'll be doing that, so – um, you know, a bit interesting day tomorrow, but we're trying to make it all work, which is all fun. Carol's in the house. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Good to see you, Carol, on HR. And Ivan is in the house as well. I'm sure he has his whiteboard. Um, Sir, Sir Ivan of the whiteboard. Uh, Pay the Piper is also here. Evening. We'll be keeping an eye on the ESPN games. Yes, yes, yes. We will be keeping an eye on those ESPN games too. So it's a full packed day tomorrow. It's a super Saturday, and there's a lot that the lot can, can adjust and happen. Uh, but mainly, uh, we're focused on the Wrexham game. I'll wake up early. I'll watch a little bit of the Mansfield game. I was going to wake up early to watch the whole thing but i was like screw it uh i know that uh, the red horde will be doing a watch along for that so go check him out and uh, pop over when you want i'll be in his probably his chat but um uh at some point they're in there but uh yeah we're gonna be doing, doing that and there we go uh john what's going on brother uconn baby uconn pulled it out didn't they john you, you loved it didn't you i'm telling so they look so good um pulling away today my uconn one 
uh, in the first round. Granted, it was against Stetson, but what are you going to do? Greetings, our game uh, versus Mansfield next week on ESPN+. Plus. Is it? John just hit me with it. John, is that true? John, is that true? If that's true, then we're they're, we're cooking with gas already. Fan effing tastic. I love it. Thank you, John, for that. Good to see you, by the way. Good to see you. All right, let's dive into a little bit here, uh, and then maybe a little bit later on we'll get Kieran in and we'll get uh, Carol or anyone else Ivan wants wants to come in and have a chat. Uh, I'm gonna get to some um, some things that I thought was very interesting. Uh, it is awesome. Good to see that, John. Good to see that. So you know that'll be good for us to have that. You know, it's here. Let me just pause right there, real quick, real quick. Um, this weekend, the Mansfield Colchester game is on. Our game's not on. Then the Stockport game is on. There's got to be something. Um, there's got to be something going on there where the the Rexham games aren't getting on the EFL on the EFL. I know we have the iFollow thing, which by the way is 33 bucks a month. You know, hopefully that changes. I don't know why all the, why we're not on it. It'd be interesting to see why that's happening. But all three of those games should be on if they have the EFL package for League One, League Two, and Championship. Why are we not on it? Now, granted, uh, maybe the eyeballs on the iFollow for the Rexham to get to get the numbers. I'm not sure. But, you know, I, I find that uh, frustrating. But then again, like John just said, our game is on next week against Mansfield. So what is it? What gives? Uh, all that needs to be worked out. Uh, and I'm sure I'm sure they won't at some point. Uh, at some point they will, but I'm sure they won't this year. But, you know, it's at least we're going to watch some games. Whoever would have thought we would have been watching League Two games on ESPN Plus. Come on, now. You know, I didn't. 11 a.m. my time, 8 a.m. Uh, or your time. So that's a good Friday. That is a good Friday. Yeah, that's a Friday game, and I'll be doing that for sure. That's a good Friday game. So I'm pumped about that. Let me know if the stream's effed up. Uh, I see it going down a bit. Let me go. I see it going down again a bit there. But all right. Uh, we'll just keep the chat going. Get involved. Get involved. Get involved and uh, drop your notes in there. But I'm going to talk about uh, what Parkinson said. said. Uh, he wants to forget about the Derby defeat uh, and focus on the Grimsby town. Again, again, that's why the thumbnail is there and, and Parkinson is on. Uh, grim ready um, because you know I think it's a mentality he wants to set. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a mentality he wants to set. Uh, God, the chat is amazing. I'll bring that up in a second. Eric Cole, I see you in there, Eric Cole. Um, so let's see. So uh, if my internet does suck balls, sorry about that. Internet does suck balls. So uh, Rexon continue to continue the promotion challenge away to Grimsby. So uh, there's Parkinson there. Phil Parkinson doesn't want any disappointment from the Derby defeat to linger as he has urged his players to put their focus on getting back to winning ways against Grimsby ta Town at Blundell Park tomorrow. Also, two quick note. Saw this, uh, and this is probably in the quotes. I didn't read the articles, but I did. I you know I sound like I'm, I'm reading Playboy. Like I, I I was there for the articles, but I, I glanced at the pictures. I wrote the I read the top sheet, but I want to keep it fresh in my mind so I don't go through and like read and like have my have my dissertation ready. So again, uh, it's like I'm reading. It's like I'm opening up a Playboy for the first time, and I, I'm there for the articles. But uh, understandably so, I just want to keep it fresh for everybody so we can have a good, uh, clean, co a fun conversation on that too. On that note, um, he might say this earlier. Barney's injury is not is not bad. It looks like he is. Um, it looks like he's going to be. Not, he didn't. They thought he had a broken foot, which didn't come out. They love to keep things in house. Um, so it just had a big bruise, broke big bruise foot, and it wasn't broken. So that's good. Barney is injured, but he's not hurt. Sorry, hurt, not injured. Whatever we're going to put it, but it's not broken. Let's put it that way. So uh, we'll talk about uh, lineups. Maybe maybe that's something we can look at in a little bit about lineups there um, coming up a little bit. Anyway, so Barney's not uh, Barney's foot is not broken. Anyway, so he goes on to say Wrexham dominated last uh, Saturday's League Two clash against local rivals Tranmere. We lost one 0 Okay, he had said um, Parkinson said uh, I'm I'm just stressed to the players. I just stressed it. You guys can't read that. So why, why am I looking at that? Uh, I just stressed to the players about concentrating on what we did well and improving uh, on the other aspects. But equally, make sure we put any frustration on not getting a result firmly to one side uh, when uh, when we go to Grimsby. Now that's hard to that's hard to um, grasp, Brown. So it's like, yeah, we played well, but we didn't get points. You know, that's that's a good positive mentality but will it will it translate into what's going to come off of this week it's like you know you know you you went out and you tried to score and it didn't you didn't score you know I, I get it and it was a it was definitely a very frustrating game what i'm hoping for and i'm reading through the lines here if i'm if i'm the manager it's not about what the um what happened on the uh what happened we didn't score we we huff and puff we didn't do we did dominate that game we didn't win obviously what i'm hoping for the uh Hold on, Tori just said something. Sorry, Tori. Stream's just a bit glitchy over here on Twitter, but it's not bad at all. Okay, thank you, Tori. Appreciate that. Um, uh, let me just double check on Twitter here, or X, whatever the hell we're calling it these days. Uh, do, 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 do. Give me a sec. Uh, lost the connection. 
Okay, I see myself there, my ugly mug right there. But uh, if maybe one's better on YouTube, I'm not. Yeah, maybe I don't know. We'll see. But it seems to be okay there. Uh, just let me know if it sucks balls, and uh, I'll figure something out. I'll uh, I'll make sure that uh, producer Ann is not uh, not ruining our stream. Although you know, it it is what it is. Anyway, so uh, what I was going to say was yes, we puffed, huffed, and puffed, and we did not get through uh, yes last week. What I would be more pissed off about is them celebrating on our pitch. Um, so uh, you know, that's that's one thing I need. I, I think that should be should be brought up. It's that they're celebrating on our pitch, um, and it's like very frustrating to see that. But to be fair, it's like we brought it upon ourselves. We put our we put ourselves in this position. We have eight games left. We got to go. What Parkinson is trying to do is trying to motivate this team, and I, I believe in what he's I believe in what he's saying. Whether it sounds surface to anybody, he's doing. He's got to manage the squad. He's got to manage the. Uh, he's got to manage the press, and he's got to get his, his team back up and running for uh, the weekend. So it's like, yeah, we got it. We got punched in the mouth. We got to go back out there. So what I would use, I would use the fact that they celebrated on our patch, and we go out there and got to deliver again. Who's your Rexham fan? Yeah, you change your thumbnail, brother. Good to see you. Uh, night out with the fam for me tonight. Have fun, guys. Good to see you, man. Uh, good. Uh, Greg's in the house. What's going on? How you doing, Greg? How's everything on your end? Uh, Greg, uh, great guy. Also, um, I've been talking to him on the side uh, over the past couple months. Great guy. Works for the United Stand. If you're if you're all uh, secret Manchester United supporters like me, uh, uh, Greg does a great job on the United Stand, and uh, that's uh, probably the best in the business. So um, he's a, a fantastic guy. So good, good, good. Um, uh, Tori's there. What's going on, man? Uh, haha, it looks great now. Thanks for checking. Absolutely. Okay, moving on back to what uh, Parky with Parkinson was saying. Um, when we have that much dominance, something normally falls for you, and I think they're due to some. We are due some things to go our way in and around the box. Now that means pressure of getting balls in the box, which you had a lot of crosses going in, but would they affect the process? I'm not sure. Uh, we didn't. It didn't lead to goals. But uh, but in terms of effort level and desire to win the games, the lads gave every the lads gave everything, and they did give everything. You cannot say he's lost the dressing room, in my opinion, uh, or that we're not pushing for this title. But we still need to take the opportunities and go win these games. That's why this next eight games, uh, you know, the irony is that it's uh, March Madness right now, and it's a knockout tournament. Right now, it's a knockout tournament. Don't give a shit what anyone says. We are in a knockout tournament right now to go to get promoted because MK Dons are up our ass. They're going to – they're playing uh, Forest Green Rovers. They're playing uh, Mansfield. They're going to play uh, Crew. I think uh, they're going to play uh, – uh, who are they playing? Um, they're playing tomorrow, Stockport. So they're going to play in it, but we have to do. We have to take care of our business, and that's a mainly important. So um, I'm hoping this is coming across. Uh, hoping this is coming across on uh, on uh, you know uh, on the playing field uh, and in in the dressing room. Uh, he said. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, Parkinson. He says, I have watched a lot of games in our division, and if you don't, uh, and if you don't often see teams dominate like we have done in the last two games. And only get one point. So basically, what he's saying is like we dominated, and we should have gotten it. We should have gotten the result. But that's football. That's why you play the game. You know what I'm saying? Like he's saying, go out there. Uh, the way we dominated, we should at least got a point, but we didn't. So what are we gonna do about it? You know, is he gonna make a tactical adjustment? I don't know. You know, uh, Ives um, uh, has has ideas that what he's not gonna do or going to do, uh, and everyone else does, and that everyone's entitled to their opinion. I certainly believe that he's gonna go out. I think that he'll still start his same. Um, uh, the 11, you know, the, we'll talk about the 11 later, but I think maybe, I think Bolton should be starting tomorrow, i.e. because, uh, Barnett is injured. Uh, one second, it's hot as balls in here. Turn the AC on. Yeah. When I say hot as balls, it was 75 degrees in here. Jesus H. Anyways, um, uh, as I get back in as. Uh, Greg says, uh, also, also good here, mate. Just watch, just waiting for my pizza to arrive and having a whiskey. Yes. I got four walls. Greg, you having a four walls whiskey? Come on now. Four walls. Um, like Ella said, it's now or never. Absolutely. It is now or never. John Hampton. Good to see you, brother. Easy game for you this week in Grimsby. No, no, no. That's the problem. That's the dip. Greg, I know you're goalkeeper. He played, you played, you're well-versed in the league. These games are not easy for us. For whatever reason, we either play down or competition. But the league is just so unpredictable that we get caught up and it, go it goes tits up and we lose 1 0 like we did last week to Tranmere Rovers. 16th, 17th, they're all battling. It, these are battling games. Greg, if you want to come on and watch a game with us or uh, spend some time with us, I don't know if I don't think Manchester United have a game tomorrow. You're more than welcome, man. This is, uh, this is the most fun I've had watching, watching football in the last 20 years. Um, I know we're. 
There you go. Kieran says it all right. Do, the man that doesn't sleep. No game is easy in League Two. That's right. Um, moving on, he says, uh, there's always going to be a bit of reaction, says Parkinson, because it's a derby game and uh, the heightened atmosphere because of that, because it's going to be a heightened atmosphere. We will address a few things going into the game, but we will wash uh, we will wash that disappointment away and move on to Grimsby where we're looking to put in a really strong performance. Now, that's all good. Well, are we going to do it? Do we, will we deliver? I think our best performance was when was when Moles had his uh, hat trick, but Maka was in the midfield. Maka will be out tomorrow, so we're going to have to adjust that. I will say uh, that we have to have I'm, – I'm starting stash. Uh, John makes a great point right there. John makes a great point. Grimsby are unbeaten the last six. Jesus sage. Is that true, John? I know John's really good on his points uh, and really is accurate in regards to what he knows that's going on. Um, let me just check. Uh, Grimsby Town are in 21st place. And uh, to, so they are – they've drawn three uh, and won two out of the last five. Negative 14 goal diff. And they could beat us tomorrow. That's the scary thing. Uh, that is the absolute scary thing. So uh, it's a big match for us tomorrow. Uh, let's, let's see what's going on here. Moving through. Uh, despite going two matches without a win, Wrexham were made third in the table because we got some results. Five points behind leaders Mansfield Town, who play early again against Colchester United. Second place, Stockport County are one ahead of the Reds with a game in hand, while MK Dons are in fourth, up our ass, um, up our ass on the same points tally, the inside of our ass. Uh, as Parkinson's men have been played, uh, have played one match more. Now, uh, Stockport has uh, not uh, has been waffling a bit. You know, they 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 drew with Salford. They battled back against that. But again, to to uh, to his point, um, to his point, man. Uh, you know, th these games are to Kieran's point. So, no easy games. Put that on a shirt, Kieran, and wear it everywhere. There's no easy games in League Two. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Greg, drop me a message. You want to come by? Then you're absolutely. We're gonna be. I'm doing a super Saturday tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a long day. So it's going to be a long day. Uh, Kim says, I don't think Wrexham has dominated any game quite in a while. Morkham, but they were at, uh, they were down to 10 men. You know, could be right. And there's a lot of pins going on. Uh, Greg Hartley says, I know, John, uh, had it firsthand when I was at the goal, goal coach, goalkeeping coach at Oldham. Uh, Greg Hartley is an old goalkeeper. Yeah, not an old goalkeeper. I don't want to put age on anybody, but he's a goalkeeper. He's got that goalkeeper mentality. Uh, let me see here. Uh, going forward, Parkinson says, we are in a good position, he added. We are in a good position. Uh, the challenge of the season is dealing with the disappointments, and we will do that. Well, we be, we need to do that now. I've been saying it for the last three games, and we've kind of gotten lucky with some of our results. Can't argue that. We can't, you know, we have gotten lucky with some of our results. Um, um, he said this group, this group of lads gives everything. And one thing supporters can say about the lads is they represent the shirt with real commitment every week. Sometimes it's not perfect, no shit, uh, and doesn't go our way. Sometimes it does, but the lads gave a lot at the weekend, and we will pick the team to try and get the result at Grimsby. That's a whole thing. What is the team going to be picked? Will he make adjust adjustments? There's a, you know, Ali Palmer starting next to Malls. Uh, I don't think he's lost the match, but, you know, that doesn't always translate to, to, to you know, he hasn't lost the match. So, but now or never is where we're at. So Kelly and Connie says, um, Kelly and Connie says, all games are now a must win due to last week's loss. Are we going to say that? And I don't disagree with you, Kelly and Connie. Uh, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you that, that, that we're in a, we're in a mostly must win situation, <laughs> you know, um, with some other, with some other, um, with some other, um, uh, with some other, uh, uh, you know, favorable results. We'll see. Uh, you know, that's why we're watching the games tomorrow. I don't disagree with you. Uh, uh, he says uh, lots of draws, but no losses. Yeah, that means that they're 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 fit to play. They're ready to go. So, so John makes a great point. Um, they are unbeaten in six. Good side at the moment. They are a good side. Eric Cole says Grimsby has a mid has midfield creativity. Don't know much about their midfield. Um, and I, what uh, do we know? What happened? Excuse me. Last time out we played them, I probably should do my research, but I, I did not. MJ says nice. Um, I do love MJ's. Uh, I do love MJ's thumbnail. Uh, so it says also. I'm turning 50 tomorrow. We got to win this. MJ, everyone in the chat. MJ, wish everyone a happy birthday to MJ. Happy birthday, MJ. Uh, congratulations on your half century and uh, huge, huge uh, to you. And I hope you enjoy yourself. And I hope you do get the win. And um, you know, hope that uh, you know, we make your your night before a little bit better. And uh, happy birthday. Um, so happy birthday to you. Awesome. Good that. Good. Wish him a happy birthday in the chat if anyone is in there. Uh Wrexham will uh were in a great position last week was a disaster. It was 
it, w- it wasn't a win. It wasn't three points for sure. Joe says three nil win dominated them. Uh, one of our best games. Okay, good. John's in, listen, John, listen, you can say a lot of things, but John knows his stuff in regards to stats uh, and knowing what's going on in there. So uh, very, you know, he knows his stuff and uh, I, I like conviction in his in opinion. And uh, you know, John, uh, John knows his stuff. So uh, uh, happy birthday, uh, buddy, 50 and 50 more. Absolutely. Uh, on that note, really sad news about, uh, uh, about uh, Kate Middleton and we wish her a full recovery and uh, her treatment and everything. And also Moscow, what happened out there? Uh, you know, football uh, is, is what it is, but you know, life happens. So we're thoughts and prayers go out to everybody and um, hope everyone is uh, okay. Uh, happy birthday, MJ. MJ says, thanks, man. Pints and Wrexham, East Coast time. Let's go. Okay, we're going to move on to this other interview, and I'm probably, so I don't bore everybody. Um, I'm gonna, there's more about Parkinson here. Do we want to talk about that? We probably do. Uh, there's Parky right there. Um, this is Matt Waters talking about that. Parkinson aiming for his side to return to winning ways this weekend with the Red Dragons travel to Blundell Park. Did I say Blundell Park? Take on Grimsby Town. Uh, it's a chance to build on previous away victories uh, against Morkham. Uh, and as Parkinson's side proved ruthless on the road at the Mizuba Mobile Stadium. Yes, the Mizuba Mobile Stadium. Mm. Despite being two games without a win, they remain firmly in the promotion battle with nine crucial games left in the season. That's that's not true. Or is that on the other side of things? Is this the right effing article? I'm an idiot. No, I'm not an idiot. No, there's eight games left. Or do they have nine? Um... Uh, I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm not an idiot. I'm not that bad of an idiot, but okay. So anyway, so uh, he said uh, it's been a good week and the lads have trained really well. The reserves played on Tuesday, which was left to the to us because Jack Marriott got a hat trick in four minutes. Dolby got two great goals and there were plenty of other good performances. Now, it was that was, as, as Ivan said, and as Ivan said the other day, it was a scrimmage. It was a scrimmage. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was the, the first team played against the second team, you know, so I understand that, but the good news is confidence, and uh, we need confidence. JM hasn't hasn't been that great on the pitch, as we know, but he has the talent to go and kick ass and score goals. We're going to need that. We're going to need Mullen to do that. Um, so whatever whatever you can get out of there, whatever confidence you can get. I mean, when I used to play basketball, and I go have a good I have a good scrimmage or a good practice, it'll bring you to the next one, even if you're down. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you know, in a game experience. You just need I, – I, I relate this to basketball because that's my sport. You just need to score. So, you know, instead of shooting, you're off. Your shooting's off. Um, I would go and I'd drive to the net uh, and I'd either, either dunk it or lay it in or whatever it is. I would go and I would do that, and that would be like, okay, you get the confidence to do that. If you don't go and you make a – and you you know get a layup and you get fouled, you go to the line, you shoot, and you make those. Just seeing the ball go through the net is good. So let's bring that back to Marriott, to JM. Just seeing the ball go into the back of the net, they're like, oh, I can do this, especially in a four-minute hat trick or whatever he had, um, kind of changes that mentality. So I don't think JM is going to start. I fully believe he's going to go Ollie and he's going to go Mulls up front. Um, I think that's what he's going to do. God forbid. I, I really hope I really hope that uh, Stash is, uh, is 100% fit. He's not 100% probably match fit. He's, I hope he doesn't start young. I hope he starts Stash in the middle of the park. You know, I, I don't I don't know if he will, but I hope he start he starts dash inst- instead of young. Hey, Bex. Oh. One sec. Uh, I told you, my cat has a lot of um, my cat has a lot of uh, health issues. He had this has you know stuff. That's not sorry. I apologize. I know it's gross, but uh, anyways, uh, like I said, just seeing the ball go in the back of the net is good. Even for Dalby, I don't listen. I don't. I don't like to be mean on uh, on players, but Dalby, I don't rate him that well. But for him, scoring two goals is great. Um, you know, so you gotta those performances are good, and, and, I, and I appreciate that. So uh, I'm gonna drop this in if anyone wants to come in too, because I don't want to bore everyone with me reading. But I want to get a good chat going um, on that, and uh, you know, maybe I can breathe a little bit too. Uh, okay, so he said it's a good week, and the lads have trained really well. The reserves played. Uh, the reserves played on Tuesday. Benefit the Jam. Uh, I know it was against young opposition. So this is what I just said. This is, I told you I don't read the articles before. I, it's like a Playboy. I check out the pictures, and I you know I read the articles. But there you go. 
Uh, I know it was against young opposition, but we were we were bothered about our lads getting some match action, which is good for us. And that's great. I think it is good for us. Uh, in midweek, the Red Dragons reserve faith Salford City, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Tom O'Connor did play. So I don't think Stash is going to be fully fit, but God, please help start son of a bitch. Even if he plays 60 minutes or his 63 minutes, start him. He's so much better than young, in my opinion. He holds the ball up. He's got great passage of play. Um, and for me, he is our he's our engine. And I think that was uh, that in Geo being out was the start of the inconsistency of why ha- why we have um, you know, why we have not uh, been able to kick on and be top of the league. Now, you know, that that's my opinion, uh, George. Uh, so it says uh, George Evans has to continue to step up his return. Thank God uh, to training. Thanks to the work of the medical staff. While Ryan Barnett uh, had a scan due to the injury. This is what we were talking about against uh he sustained against Tranmere. The news on both Connor and Evans provides a boost during an important period uh of the season and Parkinson added he is delighted to see their their progression. God please get them back. He said George is in a decent place in terms of the end stage of his rehab on the grass. He's done a lot of physical work this week and today hopefully uh his last day will be with the medical department. They worked exceptionally hard with him and uh he has as well. So what that says to me is that George, George is a match, match fit, but he's fit. So, um, you know, I think he had an upper, upper. Th- I think he pulled his hamstring or something, or pulled his high, low butt, high, high butt. I don't know. He pulled something. So he's not fully fit. So, if Geo and Stash come back, it gives us options in the middle of the park, and I think we can control games a little bit better by the going long ball over the top that'll make Ivan's head explode. And have his hair grow back, and me lose my hair more. Um, so we keep the ball on the on the ground. If we can get those guys back, control the games, we can win the necessary games that we need to win to get promoted. Now, I still think there's a chance, oddly enough, that we could win this league by hook or crook. I have no idea. We're still in it to win this league, but we can do it. Um, if I'm being honest, and I'm not thinking with my, if I'm not thinking with my heart, I'm thinking with my mind, we're probably coming third. But we have six pointers against Crew, Stockport, and Mansfield to come. So anything can happen. But having these guys back is great. Onward, he says. <clears throat> he says, uh, "This is Parkinson again." Tommy continues. Stash, that is uh, Tommy. I never heard. Of, I don't call him Tommy. Uh, Tommy continues to make his road back. He's played sixty minutes on Tuesday, and that was a good for his progression. Remember, he got injured. We thought he got injured. We thought it was bad, and he ended up playing on Tuesday. So Stash being back and playing an extra sixty minutes is great. Uh, James Jones, JJ, uh, progress is not as as good a fort, unfortunately. So uh, I rate JJ. He's just not someone that I'm going to be like. I need him back. I need those two guys back in the midfield. So JJ, JJ's progress is not as good, unfortunately. This is Parkinson. Uh, we've got a couple. We have, we have we still have got a couple points with him, which aren't quite right. So that's going to be a quite uh, quite a bit longer. I mean, we got eight games left. I mean, how how much longer do we need him? Uh, we got some really good news with Ryan Barnett. Uh, we thought he had a potential broken foot. We sent him to first scan, and it also came back clear. So that's good. Uh, we talked about that. He still got a lot of bruising around it. We did fear the worst and saw the state of it after the game. And, uh, you know, unfor- uh, fortunately, he's good. Uh, Ruby Slippers is in the house. Ruby Slippers, hey, uh, yes, let's hear a Parky, uh, Parky Goss. Ruby Slippers, so uh, I've been following you on X. If, you have, if you're not following um, Ruby Slippers on X, or I don't know if you're on uh, Instagram. We are on Instagram as well. Uh, she had some great photos. I think you went over to the match. I'm almost positive. I think you were with Matt, uh, Race Cross Ramble as well. And you saw Matt Al, who's a regular on the channel. So i uh, love to hear a little bit about uh, your experience out there. Um, and possibly, and I'm going to say this, uh, other than producer Ann being on the show at some point, she still won't come on, uh, you could be one of the first, uh, one of the first women uh, to come on the show. So if you Want to come and tell about your experience and what happened while you were there? If you're not still there, let us know. But follow Ruby Slippers. Uh, she's a great supporter. Uh, shout out to her. Um, many happy returns to MJ tomorrow. Alex the Oracle is there, the Newport County guy, uh, fan. Uh, he says, hello, hello. Uh, Ruby Slippers said, I, uh, I've, I've, had, I've heard stuff too right now. Uh, I, have had, I have had stuff too right now. Uh, get Kitty extra love from us. I'll get him. He's sleeping. Uh, I will show you, but he's, he's sleeping right now. Uh, and it is good from George, she says, and I did. Awesome. Yeah, she, I think I did, meaning like she went over this overseas. So I'd love to hear about it um, if you want to come on and tell us about your experience. So 
moving on, the Mariners sit six, uh, 20th place, six points adrift off relegation. That is uh, Grimsby Town tomorrow. Uh, and, and are under new management since the, they visited the Stoke earlier this season. The Red Dragons uh, brushed Paul Hurst's men with an emphatic 3-0 victory uh, that John was talking about with goals coming from Ollie, William Boyle, and Elliot Lee. Billy Boyle had a goal? Billy Boyle? Got, the gentleman had a goal? Wow. Hmm. Here's where it gets here, here's where it gets interesting. Um, the Red Dragons uh, brushed Paul. Uh, no, the, uh, it's now uh, it's now former Wrexham defender Dave Artell, who Kieran has mentioned in the past that Dave Artell uh, is is really experienced in regards to like his his uh, preparation, and so we I think we believe that they'll be ready to go. Uh, Dave Ar- Artell is now at the home. Uh, he's uh, has taken the Mariners on a five game unbeaten run, so that's pretty amazing. Ahead of games. Tomorrow's game, Parkinson is looking to forward, looking forward to facing uh, what is set to be a terrific atmosphere. What does that mean? Of course, it's going to be a terrific atmosphere. It's a beautiful game. Uh, uh, that accumulated in a heavy defeat against Doncaster, so they have changed, and the stats will back that up because they've gone risk-free at the back and been direct. And on that note, I'm going to bring in K uh, K Rod, um, uh, K Ron, K Ron, uh, I'm bring K Ron in. Yeah, K-Ron, K-Ron, right? K-Ron, that's, that's, yeah, K-Ron, that's a new way. I quite, I quite like that, actually. Yeah, yeah. K-Ron. Yeah, K-Ron. yeah, that's quite nice. Right? Are we going to go with that? Yeah, I think, we, I think that is a thing that uh, could take off. All right, K-Ron's going to take off. Were you in bed? Were you up? What were you doing? Were you at the pub? What's going on? I'd be, I've been up the whole I have been up the whole time. Um, I... I'm in the consideration of slowly starting to sort my sleep routine out, but that also requires either the, the nice, simple way of, you know, just sleeping on time or the 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 quicker way that probably isn't beneficial is you stay up for an entire night and then you crash out and you start fixing it that way. Yeah, so we're I going think, one or the other. I think if I think I'm going to become I think I'm going to uh, nominate myself as Big Brother. OK. I'm going to nominate myself as big. I could be five. Well, you're 18. I can't even I'm 44. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm, I call it big brother. So let's get you a sleeping pattern. Maybe I won't keep you up so late or you won't keep me up so early for the games. But shit, man. Um, I love it. Um, anyways, uh, so we're talking. I know you're in the chat and I appreciate that. It's good to see you. Uh, uh, good to see you in the chat. And uh, if you're not following Kieran, follow Kieran UTC. Uh, he is. He does a lot of shows in regards to really knowledgeable on League Two, League One. So uh, I don't. I think he's on every show other than Sky Sports uh, throughout the week. Yeah, but, uh, we're starting. Like, yeah, every show other than Sky Sports and anything Milton Keynes related. Yeah, done, everything yeah. else is covered. Yep, done, done, done. So um, you know, Parkinson's get into. You know, I wonder. Uh, I brought you the perfect timing, by the way, talking about Dave, uh, David Tell, David Tell uh, about Tell. this. Game. And uh, for our pregame tomorrow, and you know, what, I know we talked about it earlier, but like, you know, what are we looking at here? Um, it's really for them. John's on your ass already. Yes, yeah, yeah. What are we looking at? He's then? not like, wrong. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> he's, not wrong. It, yeah, he's not wrong. But yeah, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. There you go. Uh, so let's talk about David Tell real quick and about some of the things that Parkinson has been saying. Uh, have I been talking shit myself, or am I making any sense to anybody on this? Nah, I think you uh, you make sense. I, I never, I obviously I listened to you reading over what uh, Parkinson said, and the, the the only thing that I don't like managers doing, and every manager does this, when they talk about training being good and that effort levels were up. Mm-hmm. First of all, I feel like that should be expected, and I feel it's it's a, it it can be used as filler content, but yeah, yeah I mean. We talked about the the reserve game and its potential importance with your regard and your very uh, agreeable point to the fact it could bring confidence to them, but also the fact that, you know, it's, it, it is a training match. You know, you, you won't have exactly the same match intensity and all this other stuff, but... You're willing to take yeah, more chance I mean, to go out and, like, do... You know what I mean? But as far as, like, like let me press you on that, like, the confidence thing, like... Like yeah. I said, you know, sometimes you want to build that confidence. Now I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth, put it back on you. He, they need to play in the games to actually get the confidence. You know what I mean? So that's that's the problem, right? You know? Yeah, that that tends to be the issue. You know, like I I could 
score one on one in a training match. I couldn't do it in League Two, kind of thing. I mean, yeah. they're very diff- they're very different scenarios. So I mean, again, there's two sides of the coin. You look at it and you go, the one side, yeah, actually, you've got players that are potentially not um, not performing exactly how you'd want, whether that be Merritt or uh, Dalby, and they're, they're performing in this test match, and you look at them and you go, you know what, maybe that gives them the confidence because they know where the back of the net is now. They've kind of found it again. But it, it is, it's very different, of course, you know, with nobody watching to a crowd and you know what's up to stake in a league match. And when you're playing a David Artell side, which I'm going to contradict myself referring to the uh, point about putting hard work and everything as filler points from managers his teams do work work really really hard i mean I, I, there's no statistics i've seen but there, there was one i saw ages ago and it was like they they had covered some of the most amount of the pitch in a game for like one of the league two matches so you know that that that's kind of been the issue with them you, you never they never lack the the wants and the desire to do well. They never lack the kind of, you know, effort to track up and down the pitch, uh, make the game uncomfortable and everything, but they just slightly lack the technical ability. So if you actually go there with the intention of playing football rather than trying to play a League Two match of long balls and headers and players barging into each other, you know, there's more of a reason to say that you could be confident going into tomorrow. But Based yeah. off of many of the conversations we've had, it, you know, you might be playing a lot more over the top uh, physical football rather than the nice stuff that we know yeah. your players can play. Yeah, and uh, Greg, uh, uh, Greg Hartley uh, from the United Stand, uh, you know, he mentioned that too. He's like, you know, should be an easy win tomorrow. Could have said it in jest, and I, like I said, he, uh, he knows his football. Uh, but you know, these aren't easy games. You know, and we keep talking about these. The fuck is wrong with this league? These are not easy games. You know, we would think, ah, they're in 17th place, whatever. You know, we beat them three 0 last time, and now we're going to their they're going to their patch. Um, I, I, by the way, on that, do they have a they have a nice pitch, or is it is it going to be a cow patch? I mean, it's not state of the art state of the art pitch, but it's not Bradford Bog, so you you kind of got to find a fine middle ground. So I don't think it would be much of something that you can put the issue towards if the performance doesn't go your way. Yeah. I, uh, and I know, like, uh, Ruby Slippers asks, uh, if there's a reserve game of teenagers, does it generate meaningful confidence uh, that carries over to the match days? Uh, from personally playing, in, you know, what I, I played basketball, uh, you know, it gets you a little – it's not – you don't quite either – so I would find sometimes you either, either are more confident uh, in the match – or you're less uh, reluctant, and those are the times you get hurt. So luckily, people didn't get hurt. I, but again, having Marriott, for example, we're talking about him and Dolby see the ball go in the back of the net. That might change some things. You know what I mean? So, I don't, did you? This I don't mean this. Uh, did you play football? Like, did you? Not that you. I played it. I played it to a, to a very minimal degree. Yeah, and yeah. I had always played in goal, so I never had to find where the back of the net is. I just rather had to do the opposite and prevent it. But. Yeah. No, I. It gives it gives you confidence to have these reserve matches and to know that you're playing opposition. That is, you know, that they're not there to lose to you. They are there to to test you, and they're there to test themselves. It's it's better than, for example, using the entire Wrexham squad, um, and you know, just doing like a reserves versus main team. It's better yeah. to have two different teams because they're both out there still with the intention of winning, but it can bring, yeah, it will bring confidence to a degree. It definitely will, but you know, that, that can all of a sudden disappear. If you, uh, if you have in an actual game, you, you miss an easy chance or you do these kind of things, all of the stuff you can do in training doesn't really, yeah. uh, matter that I think the main thing that you always think about when you think training is building up sharpness and building up the ability to perform to the best of your ability. And, uh, in the actual competitive game and training matches help it. It's a good, uh, it's a good balance to add to the routine, but I wouldn't also, you know, look into it as this is the be all and end all of how we're going to play tomorrow. 
Yeah, and then also too, it's like you know, you want to impress, you want to do well. So, I mean, if for for someone that's on the bench, uh, you know, position or that gets their opportunity, you want to show that you can play well. So maybe that does change Parkinson's uh, idea and matchup uh, idea how he wants to go through. And and I know this comes on like he puts people on late. That's just his style. Maybe they'll say like, hey, listen, I feel a little more confident putting JM on if he doesn't start because I think he probably should start Paul one tomorrow putting JM on at the 60th minute, you know, to give him a little bit more time because he's feeling it, you know what I mean? And he's, listen, Parkinson's not stupid. He obviously knows how to play, but getting a little bit more, you know, there's a little there's a little more sharpness there. Maybe he feels more confident putting them on a little bit early. Uh, John says, Kieran, will you go to the polling game on Tuesday? Good luck. I'm not going to the polling game. Um, unfortunately, I, I'd looked into all the tickets and God, they sold out quick. There's every single Wales match. They sell out within... You know, like hours, but uh, wow. yeah, I'll, I'll be sat here watching it on the TV and absolutely praying we could pull off a result. So uh, it, it was good against Finland, but Poland, uh, I'd argue, a tougher opposition. Yeah, yeah, they're a tougher proposition for sure. Um, you know, going tomorrow, and I want to stick on the Atel thing. I know we put it there. I see Big Ives come in. I'll bring him in. Uh, now, I want to talk about the, uh, the Atel stuff. And then, hey, what are you doing, brother? Uh, good to see you. Hey guys, uh, just oh, are you? Uh, it looks like you're on stage. Uh, about to go out yeah, the, it looks uh, like he's he's performing a magic act. Yeah, <laughs> and he's a magician. There, there you go. Oh, there you go. At least he's wearing a there shirt this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's never gonna end, is it? It's never gonna end. Um, yeah, no, it's it's all right. Go ahead. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, I was asking him about the uh, about a tell uh, and about we'll get into a little more tactic stuff, which is great. So, but uh, you know, uh, do a little lead in there about a tell, and then I'll, I'll pass the Ives about you know to uh, give his opinion on on strategy, uh, what we can expect on the other side, and what we can uh, expect to do. And listening to Parkinson's comments, either they annoyed the shit out of you, or they're <laughs> they're going to spark ideas for you. Ives, but, go ahead. Uh, listening to the comments and reading the article, I, uh, um, I, to, to be honest, I haven't heard anything new, um, like just a very standard type of interview. I'm completely 100% agreeing with, uh, K Ron, uh, with regards to the, uh, K comments of, <laughs> with, with regards to the comments of intensity and training, it's just one of those filler, filler comments. He's just obviously trying to find positive things to say um the i was a little bit confused about him talking about us changing to 433 off the ball in defense i um if i understand it correctly it's actually very very basic and very simplistic but if i don't understand it then it's probably something that is beyond my um com comprehension um, so I'm just a little bit, uh, I didn't really understand what exactly he meant by was that. Was uh, talking about that. I missed it. I, I must've missed it. Um, it was in the article. I think on Discord, people were talking about it yesterday. Um, he, Parky was saying things about, you know, a lot of people talk about how we don't change up the tactics and we're stuck in the same ways and we actually do. And he started saying things that we, um, we do flow into you know, he was just talking about formations, really. He was not even talking about the tactics. He was just talking about how we go from 3-5-2 uh, into 4-3-3 on defense. If that is what he was saying, all that means, like you, Josh, were talking before that there were a couple of games when we were trying to press a little bit more aggressively. Yes. Um, yeah, the, and the press looked somewhat more coordinated rather than just one person, usually Mullen, running around trying to press the ball carrier at the back. If he's talking about that organized press, that's when we moved into 4-3-3, just because usually it doesn't make sense to press unless you play, you press with three players at a time. But So that would make you go in 4-3-3 from 3-5-2. Again, this is not tactics. This is just formation. This is something that a school team would do because there is no other way to do it. And that's why I was, I was a little bit con confused. It's very simplistic. And then he said, like, we push Barney up and we ask Max to slide the cross. And I was reading that, I was like, okay, so that happens if the opposition is advancing on the left flank, our, um, our right, their left. Yeah. What happens if the opposition is advancing on the other side? Then we need to push Mendy up 
and ask uh, the left back to slide across. Why does it have to be Barney? Either he just said it just to say something, or or I'm missing a point. So yeah, I was just a little bit con con confused. Maybe it's just my dumbass that doesn't understand it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's not. But I think that comes to the point where it's like, okay, you know, we're trying to adapt and adjust things too. Uh, Kieran, you know, middle of the park pressing and things like that. And you know our squad pretty well. I mean, I think, and this is back to I, but Kieran too. I think we can press with Moles. We can press with uh, Elliot Lee, and you could sit Stash and is it, uh, am I missing one guy? Uh, Cannon would be Cannon, right? Sit Stash and Cannon and Cannon and Lee can press then and keep that high of the pitch. Josh, it doesn't. So, sorry to interrupt you. It doesn't work like that. You don't assign people who press. You assign the pressing team depends on where the ball is. So you right. can't just say like you guys three going to be bre pressing. No, what if the ball is over there? Who is going to yeah. be pressing then? So well, it really de depends on where the ball goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric you just you. It seems to me that Rexon covers more ground to their position. To their approach. approach. Sorry, Rexon has a possession oriented approach. <laughs> I think that's... Sorry, I. Eric, can you please expand? I just maybe I I missed the point when we it might have been, adopted it might have been, the. I think it was before you came on, but yeah. Uh, but well, well, Ivan, we'll, we'll get back to him. He can process that. Uh, Ivan, tell us about the. Oh, tell us about the uh, what Grimsby Town are doing on their side. So what we can expect there. So just like I said, the games before teams usually choose two ways to play against us. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, not this. Um, so um, <laughs> yeah, that's just for Welsh. It's, uh, for Welsh audience, um, they either going to uh, sit nice and low and uh, catch us on the counters, which other teams are very successful with, or they're going to aggressively press us, force us to play long ball as we usually do, and um, cope with our forwards isolated receiving the long balls and build from there and score from there, which teams have also done. So I would expect one of those things to happen. Which one Grimsby will choose? I don't know Greensby too well, to be honest. I don't know what their strong sides are and what kind of players they got and what actually what systems they they play. But one of those two things I expect to see. Yeah. The Grimsby had things, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kieran, uh, sorry, Kieran. I, I screwed my own stuff up. Kieran. Okay, Kieran. 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 Your own analogy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Actually, they do both of those things and in terms of more more recently uh mainly including their heavy defeat to Doncaster what they had usually done is they'd been very aggressive high up the pitch high back line you know they had tried to uh you know uh, win the win man to man but it didn't quite work and they were they were broken with long balls and all this other stuff and they ended up conceding a five of a, as a result so in more recent weeks they've been dropping very deep making sure that uh their defensive line is very stable not and anything. putting you on the they're break which you know they're not losing anything so you're you're making sense yeah yeah, yeah they they tend to sit, sit deep they'll counter attack yet the main thing that i think has it's been commented uh, a lot in and this is their is their vertical dominance. They do have quite a few tall players, so their their form of counter attack it can vary. It can be, you know, really quick, um, just short passing that relies on the disp the dispos uh, positioned Wrexham players. It can also rely on simply one over the top ball, and it goes through that way. They've got a, a few players that are quite quick and will beat most defenders in 1v1s. And they've also got the ability, which we were talking about a couple of days ago, to switch to play. They, they do that quite often on the break as well, which uh, has, has more been done in recent weeks. And as you'd imagine, and as I said earlier, and I'm going to partly contradict myself with it, when I mentioned that, of course, they, they lack a little bit of quality within that. So they're not... 100% consistent every single time they do these switching of plays, they do these long balls or these short passing movements, they may make a small error that means they uh, lose the ball and you can re-hit them on the break. But that tends to be the uh, 
the kind of the philosophy, for a better word, of how David Artel's always set up. He's always set up, especially when he was a crew on the break. And yeah. when he gets a team going, it, it, it's it's fluid. It's really nice to watch. No, we don't have that at the moment. I'm going to give I'm going to give you four. I'm going to give you a couple of things there, Ivan, to to pick off of, pick the bones out of. Uh, and Matt Al says uh, now it needs to be play center midfield, not center back. Last few games has been too deep. Actually, I think he's been off to the left and not too deep, and he's been getting bulked up there uh, and trying to curl shots in. Uh, also, Matt Al says dreams you make more pizzas in Italy. Jesus Christ. Um, he was uh, uh, John says that was their last loss, and they changed things up. Not more from out the back. Stace is in the house and says they play quick counterattack. This is Grimsby and have been, and, and have been sitting deep. Um, their counterattack is that was what worries her uh, and their pacey players uh, and which style of play and their style of play is decent. And then also fucking hell, Karen, get out of my head. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I don't know. I I just know David Artel, don't I? I mean, yeah, yeah it, it's always been how he set up, but the the way he's uh, the way he's he's got teams working especially when he spent the five years or whatever was a crew but by god it was nice and obviously they got promoted to league one and everything when uh they weren't overly expected to and it'll be that that is actually a, a fact as well and they have they do really nice fish and chips there. but yeah it, in all in all fairness to david artel i think yeah, you're quite fortunate in a way that he hasn't had a transfer window and he hasn't had all these things to bring in players that, you know, are potentially a bit quicker, potentially a bit better on the ball. And he's not been able to bring in those types of players. And he's had to play with, uh, he's had to play with what he's got. But in all fairness and credit where credit's due, he's adapted it to, to playing a lot more, <laughs> to playing a lot more physical and playing a lot more aerial long balls with some of the players they've got. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah. it. it there, <laughs> the easiest way to uh, to kind of um, summarize them is an adapted crew from a few years back, just a little bit more uh, physically dominant rather than fast flowing and fluid. Yeah. Well, on that note, on all those uh, those things there, Ivan, uh, before you go out on stage uh, to be or not to be, uh, their their counter attack is what worries me, and their pacey players. Uh, are we going to be able to handle that? By the way, are we going to be able to? Take so uh, the the, the the logic behind teams selecting to play uh, counter against us is uh, very sound because we have slow defense, and um, that's just you, you, if you have a pacey striker or two, you can easily just outrun us. And um, it's this conversation has been happening for month and month now, and um, yeah, nothing has been done about it because I I was really hoping that in the January window would have a uh, in addition of a fast D-man who can um, help us. Uh, is there anything I need to know about? People are laughing. No. <laughs> this I love, so, by the way, I, let me put, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to pass back. I love the chat. I love everybody. It's, I, I, I'm sorry for breaking. I love it. It's so good. I love all of it. I'd love to keep it light, uh, and I appreciate it. It's so good. Ivan wants to kill me. I know he does. I fucking know it. I love it. But go no, ahead. no, I just I because I use my phone. I the all the messages that I see are quite small, and I if I oh. I can't see it, so you just let me know, guys. No, basically, um, it's like is it buy and try stay or what's going on? That's what, that's what. So we love the tight so, shirts. <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any other shirts. They, yeah. These shirts are extra large already. If I buy anything bigger, it'll literally be uh, like a like a I don't know like a bed sheet. So um, <laughs> basically, what I what I wanted to do is um, talk a little bit about midfield, and uh, I think Matt L mentioned things about Elliot. Um, so the reason why Elliot's been doing what he's been doing. Uh, playing slightly more to the left and going back deeper a little bit is I I um, I talked about it before. Um, Wrexham has been very aesthetic off the ball lately. The players off the ball um, has been very aesthetic, and Elliot, being one of the more technical players, being one of the more creative players, and one of the players who likes to take on responsibility of creating something out of nothing. He tries to carry the ball and he tries to 
uh, get into the space or beat his men one on one or change the angle in order to create an opportunity for an a, a advancement for a play. Um, if we want to win, uh, we need to. The most important thing is we need to um, be more dynamic when we're offering options to the ball carrier. So I, uh, we need to make sure that there is two, three people who are offering an option for uh, Elliot Lee, for example, in the mid in the midfield on the left. There, I would like to see people not just standing in place waiting being a second behind but actually continuously moving and offering continuous options uh, because if even if we're, we're going to carry on playing those long balls we still have to provide the striker or whoever receives the ball up front there with an immediate option so far if grimsby is going to play compact defense if they're good at that at that deep defense we're probably going to run into the same problem of our shots being blocked uh, pass is getting a bit too boring, not original, mainly because we are quite static. So if I could address the boys, I would say, look, um, guys, I don't know what Parky is going to tell them, but basically if you have, if you have legs left, if you have, if you're not too tired, try to continuously offer at least two, three options to the person, to the player with the ball, use angle runs, go into those half spaces try to confuse uh, go crisscross try to confuse your your markers by changing spots by changing um positions on the on the field because uh we are being too predictable too static too predictable easy for teams to, to defend against us just praying like parkinson is always saying something's going to fall our way well look it's not been falling our way recently so we have to take the initiative in our own hands and make them work to uh to get the ball off us rather than just waiting for us to run into them like a wall time after time. Yeah. yeah. By the way, you know what? Yeah, all, all, and fantastic points. And on that note, like uh, Ivan, Ivan makes good points in there too about moving. We seem to get caught in pockets there. Uh, uh, the uh, LA Lee gets caught in that pocket on that left side there with him and uh, Mendy, who I believe Mendy has solidified his spot back there. Um, you, they get caught in that pocket, and it seems to get really dead. You know, that's kind of what he's what he's kind of. I think he's, what he's saying. Not no movement there on Cleworth. There, I don't know how much you have watched Cleworth. Um, uh, secret, uh, secret, uh, Rex and Fan Kiron, but like Cleworth seems to have you know seems to be doing really well. If we can push that ball on that right side and Bolton up there, so I see some attacking uh, prowess there between Bolton pushing up a little bit and, and Max pushing up. Um, tell us what you think on that and how we can counter on that on those regards. I mean, the entire system is going to make or break depending on the work ethic of your entire team. I think singling out one or two players is something that uh, has almost become adept and, and normal when it comes to... Uh, well, <laughs> That's a good call. I like that. That's a really good call. <laughs> flowers, too. Come on, Al. What's going on tonight? I love it. I've been pissed off at the space making shots. I actually might love it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> that is so good. Keep it going, guys. Um, I love it. I love oh, it. that's a brilliant comment. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. K knob. Nice. K -nob. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, you're trying to make a point. It's gone tits I don't up. remember. Okay, I'm going to compose myself here. Um, so, so, yeah, pretty much, I, I think that the reliability, and especially with how you play Grimsby and their uh, their compact defense and their uh, their counter-attacking themes, it's, it's not going to rely on oh, how are one or two players going to position themselves? The, the way that you often counter a counter-attack is you stop it before it even starts. So it, it's going to rely very much on not, not necessarily how one or two players play, but how the entire team position themselves to stop runners in this potential counter-attack, set themselves up. Ideally, can I, uh, I mean, Kieran, can I interrupt you for one second, please? Because you actually, course. before I forget, it's a very good point. Another thing that I would tell the boys is that instead of dropping back to the center line, when you lose the ball up front, try to retrieve it within six, six to seven seconds. 
because just like you said, exactly. it's better to try and stop because we have very the the class of our players is above everybody else. If we manage, but I just think that because the guys are getting overplayed, they don't have the legs. If they do, I would like to see them pressing aggressively on their half straight away. You lose the ball, get it right there. Or if you don't manage to get that ball back, at least you will put the pressure on their defenders to play that stupid pass, to play what have, the. Um, what have you seen? What have you seen lately on a half turn? Like I, we haven't seen that in like weeks, right? Because he has been playing deep. He should be playing up front on the half turn, get the pass up. He should be. We haven't seen. That. So the half turn usually happens when. Um, when you have an overload in the center, when you actually have another option. So the person, the player needs a little bit of space and they need a bit of confusion from the, um, from the uh, opponents covering them in order to be able to execute the half turn. If you're, if you're too predictable and you're receiving the ball when the, the other guy is already on you, one of the main principles of football, don't let the guy turn. So when, uh, whenever I work with, with the defenders, if you see the player receiving the ball facing the wrong way, that is a clue for aggressive press. You don't want you don't want him to to turn. Your job is to make sure that he either plays the ball back or square. So you know what what I mean is those basics where if you want to see Elliot Lee turning more, there should be another option who will be confusing those guys where the ball is going to go to. We don't have that. That's what I mean. You need to provide two three options continuously every time we get the ball. That requires continuous movement, synchronized movement. So that yeah. needs to be practiced in practices. That's need to be that needs to be taught on the whiteboard. You cannot let people just play what they see and expect them to be able to do that. That is that is a lot of work. That's what se that's what separates good coaching from average coaching is because that takes a lot of effort, even on the highest level. And you talked about flat crosses, the cutback crosses, things like that too. You know, we haven't been getting we've been getting a lot of crosses in the box box and they're not accurate. You know. Because so, the crosses are going in blind. There is yeah. no there is no pattern, there is no system to where the cross is going. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. that's they they're just going in on random. They are look, the players are good enough to put the ball in the in the general vicinity of where you want them to put it. They just need to know what to do with it. Yeah. And they they they, they don't, they botching it. They botching it every time. They thinking on the on the spot, on the fly. It will work just by general law of numbers. It will work sooner or later, but we need a little bit better than that. Um, Ivan, do you know enough about the side to think about who you, what your lineup would be for tomorrow? I mean, I guys, with, I'm not trying to be an asshole here. I just, I will be completely honest. It's not who is going to play. It's what they're going to be doing on the pitch. Yeah. I, as, as far like, please, I'm not trying to be as smart as here. I honestly. And that's how I approach my players whenever I manage a, a team or whenever I, I play. they all good enough to play. It's what is the plan? What are we doing? Because that's where we're lacking. We don't know what we're doing. Yep. You know, I don't care who plays in the best possible way. Don't get me wrong, guys. I honestly, everybody deserves a chance to play. Everybody. We don't have a bad player on the team. It's what they're going to be doing on the pitch. That's fair. Gary, Gary Ron, you think? Hoof, hoof, hoof it up and hope for the best. Um, on that note, kick, kick and chase, back. kick and chase. That's kick yeah, chase. yeah. With kick and chase. Yeah. Let's take it to the hoof it up, uh, and, hoof it up and hope for the best. I think, especially against the Grimsby team that haven't done well this season. Again, you look at numbers and you look at where they are on the table. That, and we talked about the the probability of something landing for you. I think if if you're ever going to play a game and win it based off of genuine probability and chance of things falling your way we talk if you are going for hit it long and hope that awkward bounce or an awkward touch by a defender i think that's where you overall look at this game and uh immediately it kind of you know that, that is where you get the success out of and it it could be a game where you win this one comfortably it could it could very much be a game that you win it comfortably because the system of trial and error and probability with exactly the same thing against this Grimsby team because of, like I mentioned, where they are on the table and the quality and the fact that maybe David Artel doesn't have them 100% set on the system that he wants to play yet. It 
it probably has a higher chance of working than you talk if you try to play hit and hope football or football on the spot against Stockport or MK Dons or, or teams of that kind of uh, variation. That That's something that tends to, uh, you know, despite how much we, we talk about this league being an absolute nightmare and this league being unpredictable, there is still uh, a quality difference between the top and bottom half. So the basis of trial and error, the, the basis of hitting it long and hoping it get, it bounces correctly or hoping that a, a defender takes the wrong touch or passes it back to the keeper and he, uh, he caves into the pressure, it has the chance to work. But then you also question... Are you going to have enough enough options that are going to chase after that ball? So if it does get an awkward bounce, it's it's you know fair numbers up front in comparison to one attacker, two defenders, for example. Mm -hmm. so um, move yeah, Kieran, Kieran, you're absolutely right. I mean, chat guys in in the chat, do you guys want to answer that question that John is asking? Because I just don't want to get into that because I've I've answered that question hundreds of times be before. If you guys, you know, share your opinion, why is it on Parky or it's not on Parky? Because I just don't want to this chat to turn into another uh, continuous, uh, yeah, yeah, but just to sort of talk amongst yourselves there. Yeah. So uh, players play the game. Okay. So that's that's a fair. Okay. Let's let's be. Let's think about it. Parky's to put the team out. He has his tactics, whether we like it or not. Tomorrow we need to win a game. I don't give a sh. Yeah, I don't. I don't care what happens. We need to win a game, right? We got to win a game. Uh, so sorry, Josh. What John was saying is that if players are botching it, how is that on Parky? So, and in my previous, just this, what I what I said before, literally a minute ago, I explained that the those patterns, those little micro plays, the places where the ball goes, where the player goes, is coached by a coach and that's what separate coach a from coach b um i kind of i think i explained it quite well without you know s saying anything negative about anybody uh, cor correct me if i'm wrong in the chat i think i already answered that question no i think so i think you know, i think he's just um and then no by the way i think it's good just chat conversation which is fine it's not gonna so it's like okay i think the so Dix makes, Dix makes the good point though and uh and then there's a break there a hoof ball doesn't work, so that's what we got. So we got to drive down. So what I think there's a if they're botching it, how we it's simple. So what are we going to do? Will we be able? And I I have a solution. I I I have the solution. You just need to keep them on the ground. You need to get the midfield in, in, involved in in the game. In my that's what I think we need to do. We need guys that can do that. Geo and we need Stash. Geo won't be back tomorrow. Stash is the guy that can step on the ball and slow the game down and do that. I don't necessarily know too much about Grimsby. I will fair play and say that. If we can do that, we can win the game. It is a knockout tournament. For that matter, we need to win the game by hook or car. I don't care if it's one nil, I don't give a shit. We can do keep them on the ground. We can we got to begin with the match. Anyone anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, I think that last game that excuse me, that we lost against Tranmere, we actually managed to keep the ball on the ground more or less. And we still lost the match. I, I think that keeping the ball on the ground is again one of those just generic phrases that unfortunately we have to use because we don't do that. But now, even though we did do that, there were other elements missing. We still lost. So just keeping the ball on the ground is not enough. Movement, um, activity. You, movement. You need to know what to do with the ball. What I'm seeing right now is that look. As a professional football player, especially on a high level, you everybody has a picture. Everybody has an understanding of football. They don't not. They all have football education. They all have the image of how the game should go in their heads. The job of coaching staff is to make sure that that picture is the same in everybody's heads. And that's what we don't have. They all playing their own. It's like an orchestra that is playing out of tune. So the job of the conductor, the job of the conductor is to rehearse with that or orchestra so that they know what to play and how to play without even looking at the pipeter. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's I'm giving you those uh, sort of comparisons and metaphors just just so that uh, you guys understand what actually is happening and why 
coaching is such a difficult job. Um, you um, it doesn't matter what type of players you got if you don't bring them on the same page, and it's more than one page. Because if you don't have plan A, B, C, D, if you don't know how to adjust, one page is not enough. So, yeah, it's just, it's, it is never corrected over one game. It takes a while, especially when the fatigue settles in, physical and mental. Um, so, yeah, just keeping the ball on the ground is not going to do much. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I'm, a, I sound like a broken tape, honestly. Yeah, um, I, I think we, we've said this a lot as well for the entire season from a Wrexham standpoint. It's been a lot more relying on these really good individuals for this league and the fact that uh, one, two, three, maybe four of them will have this this understanding of the game and potentially those four will be on the same wavelength in terms of movement, in terms of uh, passing and how it goes. And there have been instances, especially at the beginning of the season, where people didn't potentially adapt to how um adapt to how Wrexham played which again probably just didn't adapt to the quality of opposition they were facing in terms of individuals uh that I think that the thing with the thing with Wrexham for what I've seen uh, is that there are at certain points of a game there are three or four players who are on the same wavelength and then on the other side there's two or three that are on the same wavelength, but they're on a different wavelength to this uh, this other set four. So they're all kind of tr- they're trying in in all credit to them to you know connect the dots and have this uh, this understanding where everyone can get involved in the same set and everyone can get involved in the same system. But you know, unless you have it, especially at this point in the season where squads are gelled down to a system, all eleven of them in comparison to three or four. You can't rely on individuals or one, two, or three players to have a have have almost a co system working because it, it doesn't take long for an opposition manager or even for a well gelled team to figure out what three, four players are working together and what other players aren't exactly doing the same thing or aren't on the same uh, the same page. Um. They are only celebrated. Well, look, um, I I reckon that um, to the, I think the uh, Matt L made a comment about if players don't execute the plan, it's it's on them, not on not on coach. Uh, if Parky Parky does have have a plan, he usually does have a plan or maybe a couple of plans. Uh, the thing is that um, when players are executing those plans. If the plans are not complicated enough, if they're not smart enough, if they're not sophisticated enough, if they're not fluid enough, if they're not original enough, the other team can figure it out just as easy because those guys know what they're doing too. And they, they uh, Rexham is being studied by other team and other coaches. So the job of the coach is then to, okay, this plan, they figured us out, we need to change. And that happens as simple as the coach gets to the sideline, says the code word to one of the players, the code word goes around the players, Plan changes. We f- we fluidly move into the next plan. If that doesn't work, we move into the next one, and then into the next one. And it's but that again, that takes a lot of practice. That that is hard work because you know, you have to teach players in the classrooms. Uh, you have to give them lectures. You have to literally walk them by the hand around the pitch and show them what you want to do. So one, two, three plans is not enough. You have to have a lot of plans, and your players have to be well drilled to be able to execute those plans to the point when they start improvising within the systems improvising within this so when you start improvising that's one thing but when you're improvising within the system it's a whole next level so um all right so anybody that pays you of course their responsibility blindly throwing conductor does another company yeah so there's a balance sorry josh sir what that's what i mean by improvising within the system yeah. When they so well drilled and taught that they can start taking on responsibility and coming up with original things within the system and the players who play with them have such a good understanding of what that player is going to do that they understand the improvisation, that is a masterclass. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, it's funny. That's what like when, I don't know, this is probably a horrible, horrible analogy. When um, uh, the, the, the Chicago Bulls, they played the triangle system and Michael Jordan, they were playing you know, uh, with um, with Phil Jackson. They knew the triangle so well that they all knew what they were doing. They would improvise. They were playing jazz and things are happening. The best example of that right now is probably Manchester City, which we are not. 
you know. So when you're well drilled, you know the system. You know who where players are going to be. You're 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 thinking two steps ahead. I know that so and so is going to be thirty yards out to the left. Blah blah blah. That's probably you know the best example that is. Also, more importantly, you know, um, guys. Yeah. When I used to play, and uh, like the way I used to be coached as well as that, we used to have these exercises in practice when I would receive the ball. The coaches call stop to a whatever drill we were doing, and they will they will come close and they will ask me to look down and they will ask me to name exactly where my players are on the pitch. So I, at any given stage of the game, head on the swivel 360, I need to be able to name the location of each and every player all around me on the entire pitch. That's how they were drilling us. And it takes a long time. And, but those guys are pros. They should be able to get it quicker. So you get you go to the point of almost, um, uh, well, what's the um, the? It's like a you almost have that um, invisible connection in between one another. And what I see right now in Rexon's players is they don't know where they where the rest of the team is on the pitch. They don't know where the partners are on, on the pitch. That's why they have to take that extra second. That's why they're too slow with the, with the decisions. Like um, Stace was saying, we're a bit too slow. You know, it's it's big because they need to take that extra split second to look up, to th to think, to look where everybody is. They right. don't know where everybody else is, I and then we have to forcing it a bit too. I think people are forcing it a bit too. Uh, in my opinion, because forcing is a general term. What do you mean by forcing? I think uh, when you want forcing. Okay, I think when you want to uh, put yourself out there a little bit, do that little extra to try to make something happen. So forcing, make. I'm trying to. Do, which ends up not being the right move sometimes when you try to like. Okay, why why are you why are you trying to do that? What's the reason behind that? You're trying to take the scruff the game by the scruff of the neck, and you're trying. Why to, are you trying to do that? Because things aren't working. So you have to. Because like, there is no options. Because yes. there is no options. You yep. get in the position when you have no options, so you have to create something out of nothing. You have to create options. The ball carrier, unless he's Holland or R nine at its prime should yeah. not be creating options in the ideal world. He should have three options straight away. If he doesn't have those three options, it's not his problem. And what Parky is asking them to do is, you come up with an option. You're a great player. You're better than those other guys on the other team. You come up with an option. I ask you to show me a moment of brilliance time after time after time. You know what I mean? Yep. That's why it's called forcing. We are forcing because we're running out of options. So tomorrow. Oh, shit. Sorry. One second. Oh, oh if you guys only knew. Oh, my God. Sorry about that. My cat sneezed. Um, I, I did hear that. You heard it? No. Uh, special awareness, know. Ruby, is, is one thing. I'm more talking about telepathic connection. It's almost a that. It goes to the point when I had a feeling, you know, it was only a couple of times in, in my life during the game when I literally had almost an out-of-body experience. I saw the pitch from above. I had that vision in my head. When I was with the ball, I was playing left, wide, forward. I received the ball on the left. And I, for a second, I literally, I literally saw the pitch from above. That's how well I knew where everybody was. And that was the best feeling in the world when you just, it's almost like a computer game. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and hopefully tomorrow we can play a computer game too. All right, let's move on for the tactic stuff, which is uh, a lot of people like, uh, which by the way, it's a great chat, by the way. It, it brings a lot of interesting things. Tomorrow, there I call it Super Saturday, um, just because we're getting it started off. There's a lot of a lot of movement that can happen tomorrow. What do we think is going to happen tomorrow in those three crucial games, uh, three, four crucial games? Uh, in those games uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, Kieran. Uh, so, what is the first? The first one is is it? E oh, flipping egg. Cold I can't remember. Yes. Colchester yes. Cold yes. yes. Mansfield. Yep. Um, uh, I'll eat my hat if Mansfield don't manage to win that. Br brutally honest, they the the thing about Colchester is they're suffering almost what Wrexham are doing, where they don't have a system. Difference is they don't have the individual brilliance in abundance. So 
they're in a reality where the Cowleys kind of haven't quite got their system kind of kind of solidified yet. This could also be due to the fact that their main success came at Lincoln City and they did really well with Lincoln. So, you know, there could be managers that just analyse what Lincoln did because Colchester are trying to adapt it in their own way. So I'd be very surprised if uh, Nigel Clough and that incredible squad of players can't manage to get the uh, three points there. You then talk Wrexham, Grimsby. Um, it, it kind of feels like a like a tr- like what I said to you um, when we were just before the Tranmere game. It all depends on how you start. It really does depend on on how you start and. You know that's a very general term, and it's not very, it's not very advanced, and it's not very, you know, I'm not using very technical mumbo jumbo. But the reality is, Grimsby are down there for a reason, and they're down there for a reason because when they concede or when they get pressured early, they tend to almost throw their their original system, which as of right now is kind of their only system because David Artel has only been there for, you know, a couple months because it's one of their only systems, if not the only one that they know, like the back of their hand. That goes out the window all of a sudden. They're doing very much what Wrexham do and they're improvising without the system. So if you pressure them early, if you start really well, uh, I feel that this, this could be a convincing win. But at the same time, if you don't solidify your authority on that game early, if you don't have all this movement that uh, you know you're almost dying for, if you don't have this usual uh, abundance of pace and abundance of abilities, and almost if uh, almost if Parkinson hasn't learned a uh, an absolute miracle work over the past week and has got these players playing under a system that works, which. God, if he does again, I need my hat. I don't know how many hats I have to eat, but well, yeah, it'll be it'll be an interesting one, and it all depends in the same way that you kind of associate every football game, especially in League Two. You'll probably know the outcome within the first 15, 20 minutes or so. And then what what's the other game? It's crew and MK Dons, isn't it? Crew, no, it's crew and Wimbledon, and then it's Stockport MK Dons. Those so Oh crew Wimbledon. Game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Crew Wimbledon. What, what what I saw of Wimbledon wasn't very impressive. When uh, Newport went to play them, very very wasteful. They they played some all right stuff in terms of you know transitioning and uh, precise passing and knowing where each man is to play. But they they lack the finishing edge, and they've kind of had that for a majority of the season. Uh, you talk crew i think they're very similar and especially given they have the uh the lack of courtney baker richardson now it could be very much a struggle for them it could be a struggle for both teams to actually put the ball in the back of the net i'd if i was a gambling man i'd probably put money on a draw for that and then um and then it's well, what's it mk don stockport yeah that's which, the second watch along which i are you gonna be around yeah. that or are you gonna you guys? Uh, I'll be I'll be around for it. Yeah, I'll be around for it. I'll I'll that, try to. I don't think I'll be able to watch it. Is it on the ESPN or somewhere? Or uh, yes, yes, yes. I, uh, yeah, I'll yeah. I'll see if I have access to that game. I'm I'm not just sure yet. Yeah, well, well, I'll Stacey, see if I can get. Tomorrow? Sorry, Stacey, are you going to the game tomorrow? Just out of curiosity. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I I don't know if I can get a hold of it, but I'll I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'll I'll see tomorrow. Um. There's not much I can I can base off of Stockport and MK because they play two very different styles of football. I usually had associated Stockport with the two times we played them, very high line of press, very uh, very reliant on an opposition mistake, and honestly, very good on the ball, but in the same way of Wimbledon and the same way of Crew, wasteful with chances. And then you talk MK one of the better teams I've seen this season, but the speed they get the ball up and down the, uh, up and down the channels. They have so much variation with the way they deliver crosses into the box or not even just crosses. You know, they have the options to cut, uh, cut, cut it back and uh, play it more centrally. They have the opportunity because of all these options to cut inside individually. 
and they've got the quality of player to do it. So I'd probably, again, if I was a gambling man, I'd probably put money on a, on Milton Keynes to win that. And you especially look at the form as a, as a key factor as well. You look at a MK. Yeah, they've had little blips here and there, but they're usually quite a consistent side in Stockport. I mean, I, d- I don't know what's going on with them. They had, they had this game against Newport where they were absolutely fantastic. But like I said, when you when you have all this possession, you have all these shots, but you can't put them in the back of the net, you have a you evidently have a problem, don't you? Um, on those notes right there too, I've been going into the games that are around us tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I know I don't you know, I'm sure we'll see tomorrow during the games during our game. Um Stockport MK Don's the one after. I think that's a more interesting match. If we take care of business, obviously I think you want uh, MK to win, right? Or are you looking for a draw there? Let's talk about strategy of where we want this look, where we want it to look like around us. Obviously, we want the W. What do you think of our game tomorrow? Um, winner. Yeah, winner. don't mean to be don't mean to be a Debbie Downer or an asshole. I expect a loss tomorrow, at best a tie from us. So I don't think we we will win. Um, I hope the boys will prove, prove me wrong, but just again, just like I said, yes, they're looking at the map logically. The W is not on the cards. Um, the I would like to see the teams above us to just run away with that. So I, you know, I don't want to look like if we can stay in third, we'll stay in third. So, but from my experience, you don't look up, you look down. Um, yeah. But you think that right? You think so? Basically, like you think you like Stockport win, MK, uh, you know, are hot on our tails, need to get need to lose tomorrow. I could, I could see that, right? I could see that. So, we're rooting for Stockport tomorrow, right? No, you don't, I, I, you, you both disagree or you agree? You can root for Stockport, yes, but I don't, I, I don't think it's the probable outcome for all the reasons I'd, uh, I disclosed I'll before. Be, I'll be rooting for Wrexham tomorrow, but if. Yeah, if we don't I mean, win. <laughs> if we don't win, it won't matter. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, ideally, for a Wrexham standpoint, you want. I mean, it, the the crew game, you probably want Wimbledon to win, and then you talk potentially Stockport right. to win and everything else in between. However, so long as you win tomorrow, I don't think. Like, if I was a betting man, I'd put a draw on it, but I don't. I don't think you you need at the minute to overly rely on other results because you are still in a position where you know you can very much uh, only look at yourselves because you're third. You've got well, is it a game in hand on on a uh, Milton yeah. Keynes? So I wouldn't be obviously keep a focus on that Almada uh, MK game. And if you want Stockport to win, yeah, fine, whatever. But I don't think it's be all end all if. Um, MK win it. I think it is, in my personal opinion, anyway. I think it's the probable option. So it's so long as you're focusing on your game, and so long as you win, at the end of the day, you're one one game closer to uh, getting across yeah. that finish line, and there'll be no yeah. difference. And that's absolutely true. I'm not the guy to. Go ahead, Charles. I'm not the guy to talk to about other games. I personally don't care. I know that, like, it's just from my my background again. Like, you do your job and nothing else. Like, do what you do, do it well, get the job done. Everything else is out of your control. Yep. But if you if you fuck up the things that you're not supposed to fuck up, everything else becomes irrelevant. Yeah, Stace thinks we're gonna win by the skin of our teeth. I think tomorrow. Listen, I think it's now knockout tournament. Uh, it's checkers, not chess, at this point. You know, we got it. We have to not lose matches i know you treat, admittedly you treat every single game like a cup final because that's that's okay. the stage of the okay. reason you're at you're, every single one of these games is a cup final and that that is that is the reality but in the same way where you have cup final it's only two teams that cup final then means you don't focus on any other cup final because you're focused on your one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all great notes there. Uh, wasn't a Grizzly who beat us 5 4 in the playoffs? Don't think it will be a walk It was. None of the... Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. What did you say? Yeah, no, that, that playoff final, I can't even remember. What what year was that? It, it, it was only, I think that was uh, the season before you came up, if I'm not mistaken, when they came back into the uh, EFLs. Uh, yeah, there, there's, there's always the added um, atmosphere, isn't there, when you talk? When you talk playoffs, yeah, two years ago, two yeah, years ago. 
it was the season well, before you uh, won the National League. Tori says, I think we'll win 2-1, uh, 2-1. Two, one, two, one. Um, listen, it's a moving scale. This is a sliding scale. A lot going on tomorrow. It's very exciting. By the way, we got a bunch of people in there. Smash a like if you have it. Uh, 75 people in there. Uh, we're trying to get to 500 subscribers. We're 18 away. Would love to do it this weekend. We've uh, totally just uh, shit the bed and going up to the to the 500. Um, this is a lot of fun. Is there any? Do you want to talk about movies? You want, guys want to just think about anyone else? Like we could we could change movies. it up. It's Friday night. I mean, we can I, talk about sports. Hey, sports. What are you talking about? Music. My my be all and end all is only talking football. So so I don't think I'm the I'm your movie man. I think your only other your only other thing you have to look at uh, in terms of other sport. I do quite like uh, boxing and mixed martial arts and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you ever feel like switching it up to that kind of stuff? I'd be more than open to chatting about it. Uh, movies aren't my cup of tea. Wow, oh, well, you're fired. Uh, he's out. Done. Okay. <laughs> Joshy, do you no, ever not... go in? Sorry, you're in, you're in um, you're in LA, right? I'm in Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 Do you go and see Kings play every now and then? I hate hockey. Hate, what? hate, hate hockey. How? Leave. <laughs> I'm out. Why? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Get back here. Get your ass hate, back here. I hate Why? hockey. Why? I, I, I think, listen, I, I, I appreciate the fact that it's an amazing sport. They're amazing athletes. I fucking hate hockey. I hate <laughs> hockey. I, uh, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be blitzed on my own on my own show. Uh, here we go. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm gonna change. It. Hey guys, how you doing, Aaron? Uh, I think the oh, only sport I can openly say I dislike is like golf. That's the only sport I can say I do not like watching. No, listen, you're John's from Boston, so he doesn't count. He's got the fucking Bruins. Uh, it's the worst. <laughs> I hate it. I absolutely hate it. That's probably the one thing you and John will agree on, for God's sake. Tell uh, me, tell me why you 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 hate hockey. I I don't like Bruins. Okay, so, here we go. Uh, that's, right. that's the end Sorry. of that. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Sorry, Karen. Uh, I, all right. I grew up in Connecticut, right? I grew up in Connecticut. We had the Whalers, which is awesome. Whatever. Uh, we had the Whalers, which is awesome. But we, all we had was the Whalers, UConn basketball, which I played at, and UConn women's basketball. The Whalers went to, uh, I think, South Carolina or Florida at some point. We had nothing. I had nothing to go to go see a game. And I was always playing – sports myself so i i didn't have an outlet to be like granted i know john's gonna get me up you know going up but it's not a reason to hate the sport i okay go back jack two seconds i'll take two seconds i my job previous to the one i had now i had to go to my it was a client facing i had to go to hockey games baseball games lakers clippers game i had to go to all the map everything i know it sounds like oh braggadocious but it's like it sucked i got to the point where i hated baseball i hated basketball and i went i hated i hated going to kobe games i hated go i was at the kobe 79 game all of them because everything to me was about like going and being with clients and watching sports right. I love sports and i started to hate sports about maybe yeah. seven eight years ago hockey was the worst going to watch la kings because they sucked so mm -hmm. there you go so it just, okay, well that meant that there you go. You have an understandable okay. reason. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I even started yeah. hating baseball. I went to like four uh four World Series that like on the bounce and like you know for like and it's it just started to suck and I started to hate sports. On that note, yeah, no, uh, that that makes sense. Yeah, and I hate. I still I I fucking hate hockey. Uh, Conor McGregor's in uh, New uh, Yeah, it's supposed to be shit, but I'm gonna watch it. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Well, it, it stays. You used to play field hockey. That's a little different. That's a good sport. That's it. Or well, I, I, right. I'll pass it on to you guys. So you tell me why don't tell me about the. No, I can't skate. I cannot skate. Go ahead. I'm out. Go ahead. Tell me. Tell me about hockey. Tell you about hockey. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that back in the '60s and the '70s, there were teams in the world, national teams in the world. Uh, the same players played football, which you guys call soccer, in summer, and then they would switch to hockey and play hockey in winter. That's how cross creditable those sports are. If you like, the only thing is with with hockey, of course, you need to be able to skate better than than you can walk. 
but um, the the way the mind of the player works, those two sports they cooperate quite well, and I find I found it very useful myself because if you're good at one sport, minus the skating, obviously skating is a completely different realm, but the dynamics of the sport is very cross creditable. That's why. So there were national teams that had players on both teams, football and hockey. A lot of them, not just one or two. I just... That's the fun fun fact. Yeah, I'm not the guy to talk about hockey. I think that the the sports I only ever used to play and have an interest in, I I, I enjoyed boxing and I did that for for a little while. And then uh, there was obviously football, soccer, whatever bloody hell you want to call it. And... uh, I never... by the way, I don't call it. I don't. Call I know it you don't call it, but there are probably people, whether it be in this vicinity of this chat or somewhere within this space, that have called it soccer previous. So I, every go. time I hear people every say soccer, time. I always want to say it's pronounced football. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be. You know, I hate that word, but I will be inclusive to all, whether you say football or, or that word. Um, yeah, that, that and. Word. You just said that, that word, you son of a... Uh, I've God. said the word once, I already need to go consistently brush my teeth out. I try to be a logical person, and if the sport involves kicking the ball with your foot, it should be called football. If it involves carrying a ball in your hand, it should be called handball. And so on, so, so forth. So rugby that's, ball, that's all I'm saying. Rugby, what is rugby then? Because it's rugby it's and rugby, football. Rugby is rugby football. Rugby football. That was yeah, the full only name other of rugby is rugby had. football. That was the only other sport I had an interest in. I very much lost the interest in it, given how evidently crap whales are at the minute. So I've kind of just uh, lost too much hope. And weirdly, Rodney Parade is owned by the rugby team, the the Dragons. And I don't remember the last time they won a game either. So there we are. I've been doing <laughs> uh, on that note. I've been doing various martial arts pretty much all my life. Well, but the fun fact is your, that by I, your shirts, of course, you're kicking ass and taking I, I, I had, but I had more broken noses from playing from playing hockey than all the martial arts that I was doing, okay. which were which which were punching, kicking, wrestling, all that good stuff. So yeah, that's <laughs> hockey's hockey's brutal. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, no, we, I, I we do videos of you just, playing hockey just, now. Let me just roll this. We've shut the we shut the football stuff down. So we're just talking <laughs> shit now. Uh, Stace says uh, Brian Swagger of Caleb a Chase signed uh, baseball last week. Uh, C- uh, Caleb is his is her son, by the way. Um, from what I know from Instagram, she can correct me. Uh, Chase Utley, however, you spell his last name. Caleb met him too at Rexon game with uh, Brian. Uh, yeah, that's Rob's. Uh, that's Rob's. Uh, Rob Caleb's more title. famous than Stace's. Uh, uh, Caleb's more popular. Hold on a second. Ivan, did you know that Caleb gave Stace flowers for her birthday? I had no clue. Did you not? Why? Know? Why? Because you're not on, uh, you're not on uh, Sweet Cramps. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, but he actually. Is that a good thing? Uh, I don't know. Well, she's, I think she's married uh, or has, uh, or whatever. But like, he's given flowers out to everybody. That's incorrect. Funny. Yeah. Incorrect soccer about game. soccer before it was, it's incorrect. <laughs> Okay. Oh God damn it! Oh, man, oh we've got start that. of this debate now. Oh bloody hell! Here we go. <laughs> You're not caring. Me. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, there so, uh, so, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm running through a lot of things. Kieran bought me. Yeah, Kieran bought you flowers. I I thought was... for your birthday. <laughs> Ruby slippers loves loves rugby. Uh, rugby is a Aaron, good school. Aaron says he was a soccer fan before it was football. Do you guys know soccer. the origin of word yeah. soccer? Go ahead. How how it came to be? Let's go. Shut the show down. No, no, I'm just no, like the guys in the in the chat. Obviously, they're gonna go on Google now and find, and find out. But if you think that soccer is the word, you're wrong. It was not a word. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, this is the local pundit canceling show because we're we're debating whether it's soccer or football. <laughs> nah, let's let's stop that. Let's stop that. No, I don't care. Let's go. I, I, listen, by the way, I love it. Who needs racks? Uh, the switch it all up go. now. Is it soccer or football? Josh, go on. Josh, what's the most popular sport in the world? Baseball. Hey, football. 
No, it's football. Food. Football. <laughs> by, <laughs> by a land by a mile. Like literally by oh, like, no, not no, even no. nothing. I don't even yeah, I don't even remember the statistics, but there's something about the Super Bowl getting like it was like free. Do you guys was know like why football was the most popular views? sport in, in the world? No, but hold, go ahead, tell us. <laughs> no, Dave, go get back here. <laughs> go ahead. Why? Because you only need an object to kick. You don't need anything else. You can play it anywhere, but on any surface. I even played winter football. I played football on compacted snow, and it was a lot of fun. Where'd you grow up? Sorry. So I'm originally like, tech. Technically, I'm from the USSR, so the country that doesn't exist anymore. But my family is mixed Ukrainian and Russian, so I grew up sharing time between two countries. So, and we had uh, in one of the towns we had a league. Um, yeah. cheapest to play yeah that's 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 right too so we we had a league where we'd, you would play in winter like canadian or like a minnesotan type of winter very cold and we would play on compacted snow with red ball and it was i had more fun playing that type of football than the standard type of football just because the game is so much faster and the goalkeepers would make amazing saves because you can dive and the snow is a bit softer than the grass and yeah it was so much fun uh, yeah, yeah. We used to play. We used to play football on skates, not not broom ball, but like we we were practicing hockey. We would have a ball and we'd be skating around playing football on skates. Jesus, uh, yeah. See, uh, now now we're doing a uh, personal story. That I love it. This is great. This is what's up, uh, Kieran. What about you? You played football at a, at a level? Are you? What are you? Oh uh, well, I I am currently not playing any form of, of of sport mainly because there's like nothing in my uh, local vicinity. However, this hopefully will be changing soon as I will be moving to the big city of Cardiff. But yeah, so I used to play goalkeeper, kind of just wherever it be games I'll, that we. I'll give you. I'll give you a hint, guys. Sorry, Kieran. Sorry, I just I just see the comments. Yeah, okay. Soccer is an abbreviation. I'll give you. I'll I'll give you a hint. It's a it's an abbreviation. Okay. Synchronized swimming. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> 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 well, to be fair, that is the easiest one to play. But there we are. Sorry, Kieran. <laughs> I I I apologize. You were playing yeah, as a goalkeeper. You're all good. In all fairness, I'm my 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 quite large physique, and this is this is due to me enjoying quite a bit of food. Would probably mean I'd be quite a good goalkeeper because I fit up more of the net now. But no, you we would be a good goalkeeper in in hockey. There we go. I fill up the. This is quite a small net. I might fill up the, the net. Shittest sport out there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, no jokes. But... Uh, hockey hockey keepers are incredible. Yeah, no, I, I have seen clips to be fair. Yeah, but uh, we, I always used to play goalkeeper, and we had either like had very small leagues that we had played in, or you know, we you just play it, and nobody else would offer to be the goalkeeper. So you'd say, "All right, I'll stick myself in net just for a laugh." And um, yeah, I I was all good and fine, and weirdly, it was rugby that caused me to kind of step away from sports. Uh, I had been playing rugby and I used to play scrum half. I used to play scrum half. So I had taken the ball. I tried to drive it forward and pretty much my entire, uh, I, I was grabbed pr pretty low, tackled very low and my knee popped out of where it usually uh, had situated itself. So I had taken a few months out of sport and I'd come back and I thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll play sport now and it will be fine again. And weirdly, I, I found my knee popping just randomly as I'd be walking or anything of the sort. So this was this was about six, seven years ago. Uh, fast forward, probably about three, four years later, um, it, it had been happening happening almost daily, and this would always make my knee swell up to like the size of a balloon, or at least twice the size it usually looks. Mm -hmm. um, had an MRI scan on it, so they originally did an x-ray, found nothing, had an MRI scan, turned out that, uh, weird, I was born with my kneecap, so you have a groove that your kneecap is supposed to, like, slide into and bend into. So let's say the, uh, that kneecap groove is there, my kneecap was there. 
it was out of position and this was apparently made worse by whatever um whatever injury i'd sustained in rugby but yeah it turned out that i was born with my kneecaps out of place and i've had surgery on the one but i'm convinced that the other one has the uh the same issue so within the dis near distant future i might have to have another surgery before i play football or any sport of the sort again well there's my life story that sucks Welcome to the local planet. I'm Josh Anthony. This is Kieran, J. Ron, and Ivan. We're talking this is about my uh, story. Right? No. There you go. I love it. I this, so this made it this I was told this story that made it so much more frustrating as well. So when I was obviously when you're like a baby, you can't walk and whatever. So you get to a point probably when you're about two where you can walk, or you're you know, one coming up two where you can walk. I was free and I couldn't walk. So they had hit, I, I had apparently been trying to walk, but I had been crying in pain when I couldn't walk. So <laughs> they did an x-ray. And like I told you beforehand, this x-ray, <laughs> genetic stock, he's great as <laughs> Oh, my <laughs> Oh, that's a brilliant comment. But no, I so they did that. an x-ray. They did an x-ray and as i had told you they had found nothing with the x-ray and it was the mri scan that they had to find um so yeah but tell so, us they well, also called so pretty much what they said apparently was if i wasn't able to walk by the time i was like three pushing on four then i'd have an mri scan and they would have found these problems and sorted them out years and years ago but because I started walking just before I turned three, never got found out. So I could have had all these problems sorted and I wouldn't be here talking about football. I'd be playing it instead. Foster. But there we are. Hold on, you started you started walking at almost three. Yeah. That's that's late. That's yeah, the reason it the reason I was late is because of the knee thing. Because I was Yeah, I was about it, to say so. your parents yeah. your parents could have suspected no. something. Oh yeah. Yeah, so when i was i i was i was around it was probably about two three weeks before i started walking actually that i was taken into hospital because you know it's abnormal for a a, a baby not to be able to walk at that age but they did a uh <laughs> they did an x-ray and <laughs> no like, need <laughs> like an ostrich <laughs> <laughs> they did an X-ray and they and they found nothing. But they said if it would have been two, three, if it literally would have been two, three weeks later, or even a month later, they would have done an MRI scan, found the problem, and fixed it immediately. But instead, here I am with still probably one dodgy knee. I'm literally the, the mo I'm a modern. Knee. Yeah, but I'm a mod I'm a modern. I could become a modern day pirate. I could replace one of my legs with a wooden leg, and it would have exactly the same effect. You're Jack Sparrow. You're I'm Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. Just yeah. a lot larger and Welsh, because I don't think Jack Sparrow is Welsh, but there we are. You can uh, you can bad. still do pull-ups and push-ups, right? I can still do that kind of stuff, yeah. It doesn't involve well, my do, knees do, that, do that. that. Extent. So yeah, I think side, that's about all I can show, do. Side yeah. show we're gonna do Kier, uh Kieran and Ivan and I are gonna go on a weight program and we're gonna what the fuck happened to the show? It's grim red. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna go on a weight program and we're all gonna lose twenty pounds. Let's do this. Uh, let's do that. Or gain. Yeah. Gains. Or gains. I don't think I want to gain. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it depends on what you gain. It depends on what. Yeah, you gain. good point. Good point. <laughs> oh, it's gone tits up. All right. What the? We could do it. We could do another show. I I put this last time out. Uh, so tomorrow. Uh, uh, Karen, you're going to do a show by yourself at one point, and you're going to you're watch along for uh, for Newport County. Obviously, I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's by the way, there's 75 people in here. We don't have to get off. I, I just, you know, if you guys, <laughs> there's, 75, there's 75 people that now know about my doll GDs. Why, there we go. Why don't why don't we have 500 subscribers then? What's yeah, going subscribe. on? Subscribe. Sort it out. If I'm talking Jesus, about my guys, needs, come on. You can press the subscribe button. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, now, I can talk uh, about my knees. Then there yeah. we are. That's what's gonna put over the edge. Uh, you know, the you know, I got a dodgy knee, but uh, it's all good. I don't know how our but, hand got up. I'm gonna use it for sympathy. Please subscribe because of my knees. Hold on, John. Still, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna.
do this and I know it's going to erupt, but go ahead. Oh, here we go. Go. I put I it gave in the you chat. A I get, I get, I get, well, that's, that's guys, that's homework for you. I'm not, I'm not being as, as, as smart as it's just every time we go into conversation about soccer and football, people need to get to the root cause of it. So, um, yeah, I put but it right I here. Think some... That's it. John. Right. Boom. Is yeah. that right or wrong? Josh, Josh did the work for you. Association football, soccer. Rugby yeah, football. He answered, oh, he, oh, I, John, maybe we missed that. I answered it in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, now I ask you if you go. got... We're all over the place. I love it. Uh, no, he's he's it go. <laughs> By the way, John is probably the most uh, researched guy out there for stats and League Two and Wrexham. Got to give him credit. He does. He's a, he's a Boston guy. He's all, he's in there doing a thing, you know. That's yeah. That's awesome, man. There, there was something I had I I had from like a, a couple seasons ago, and it's literally just a, a notepad of just stats for yeah. just everything and anything in between, possession yeah. stats and accurate passes and individuals and how much they travel for night and all this other lovely crap. Doesn't oh, have any just so now, John like just so John knows. That yes. I cannot see the chat. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, yeah I, I appreciate okay. not being called the knobhead too. No, the only knobhead uh, is me. I'm the knobhead. I'm the knobhead. And apparently, yeah. uh, and, and, hey, no, I'm. Excuse me, I'm K knob. Thank you. I, I, yeah, I would like my official title. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else we need to talk about? Uh, by the way, I mean, do I, we you know, need, space, have we needed to talk about all of this? Is this a thing we needed to talk about? Are the are the are the ladies in the chat? I've asked them to come on. They don't want to come on. Hang out. I've asked them to. Maybe What's next a, time. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Uh, all right. So, what's tomorrow look like? I know what I'm doing. What are you guys doing? I have a, we have we have three shows. We have the Mansfield show, which I'm not. I'll probably get the end of it through our show here. Uh, I know the Red Horde's doing his uh, watch along for that. I'll probably pop in uh, chat wise. We have the show on our end, right? Uh, for Wrexham versus who the fuck are we playing? Uh, Rimsby Town. Then we have the the post ninety show, and then I'm doing a watch along for Stockport. So, oh, you come on soon? We mean like soon tonight or soon like never? I think this is a soon later, not now tonight. Soon, kind of next time, yeah. Okay, got it. okay. Long day tomorrow. All right, so. Kieran, are you, what are you doing tomorrow? Are you know, you know, were you gonna watch the Newport match? Are you gonna watch? Of course, game? no, it was a stupid question. Of course, I'm gonna watch the Red Newport game. Silly question, Red, right? Red Newport yeah, game, yeah, you fought, you fought. No, despite despite my ever lasting appearances on this Wrexham dedicated show. I still, believe it or not, support Newport County. So uh, I will be there. Watch on. Well, I won't be there to, at Barrow because otherwise I'd have to be like leaving to go to Newport now. And I, no, thank you. So, yeah, we're, we're oh god, that all's gone tits up quite literally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, we, um, we, look, we Josh, Barrow you tell me. You tell okay. me what you want me to do, right? So if you want me to join you up for the watch along, you just let me know. Well, you're um, three hours early, so if you want to come to the watch along, you, you, I'll, I'll shoot you the invite today, and then we'll do the okay. stock park game. Make it a little more loose and, and groovy. Kieran, you want to come on for the stock park game, or we'll do that? Uh, yeah, I'll come on for the stock park game. If you want me to come on for like a like at the half time of the racks and one as well, I'm more than uh, open to it as well. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you guys an invite too. Uh, when they break your heart, we'll be there. Oh, Ruby. that's the, that's the camera. This, this club have broken my heart enough. I can't leave it now. I've dedicated too much. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. Well, the, 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 the Karen, don't no, dodgy knees, Karen. Uh, Karen, you know, Karen, dodgy knees, dodgy knees, K knob. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Um, stay yeah. so tomorrow, guys. Please. I'm so sorry. I, He's got to go on stage. He's got to go on stage. I need to go. I'm so sorry. Stage. His magic act. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, man. Love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.
There you go. That's my guy. <laughs> oh my days. Hello. Um, oh wow. <laughs> uh, what's the? Uh, I should know this. What's the uh, magic? Magic Mike's got to go on stage. There you magic. go. <laughs> Uh, what I kind do. of magic do you think he would do? Do you reckon he'd be like? No, I. I'm do you reckon he'd be like a, an escape artist, maybe? No, I think it's, I think it's, you know the movie Magic Mike. I do know the movie Magic Mike. You think he's Magic Mike? <laughs> you think he falls under this under this category? No, he's actually a very um, Magic Muscles. Jesus H. Magic, he's actually, he's actually very. He's actually very successful in, a, in his own business, which is great. But I. Now, my goal is, and I know he's probably not watching that. My goal is just to get uh, get Ivan to break. That's it. I'm just going to try to get Ivan to break, and that's it. Get him to laugh, and that's my goal. He's got to uh, have, yeah, have the personality ready for the. Uh, he's got yeah. the personality ready for his magic show. Yeah, he's got a magic. Show. I I love that guy. Uh, John, good night. Uh, good chat and good stuff in the chat, man. Good to see you tomorrow. Go Rex. Take care, John. Um, Take care. Uh, he's had a, an appointment with his tailor uh magic muscles uh he makes his clothes uh disappear well, then, <laughs> but he needs to make them reappear because they haven't been there for a while ah this one stayed on topic the whole time hasn't it <laughs> never <laughs> devoted to anything different no it's all fun it's all fun it's really geez what the um, all right, so tomorrow, uh, let, me, let me address uh, Stay Set. So tomorrow, uh, I'll just give you the full, everyone, what's happening, it looks like. So early doors, it looks like uh, the Red Horde, Sean, is going to do the early early match for um, Nancy Old Colchester. I'm going to start the Wrexham, uh, the, the next game, which is what, 3 o'clock, Kieran? Yeah, right? 3 o'clock, yeah. off. I'm starting the live watch along for Wrexham versus Grimsby a little bit early to catch the end of the uh, Mansfield game, which is going to be on ESPN. Then it's the then it's the post ninety show, which I'll pop in and out. And then I'm doing the watch along for the Stockport um, MK Dons game. So we'll probably have, if Kieran if you want to come on for that and Stace and anyone else, any anyone I don't anyone come on anyone come on Magic Muscles anybody can come on Matt Al anyone can come on. So I'm gonna make that one a little more loose, as as you can see. Maybe we'll have a uh, a brunch a brunch Dale, you know, we'll do it from that. So that's what's gonna happen. Okay. Um, and Karen's going to the match tomorrow. God damn. It. Yeah, not, uh, oh god. Do you imagine going to Barrow? No, thank you. <laughs> uh, Barrow is a. I think Barrow from where I am is like six hours away, and that's one way. So uh, it's a twelve hour to and fro. That's horrible. Which, yeah, it's it's a, a, I mean, credit with credit to any Barrow fan that ever does an away day because they're just tucked out in the corner away from everyone. No, that's that's not fun. Um, that's not fun at all. All right, well, that's the lineup today, tomorrow. I'm gonna leave it wide open for people to come in for the the sec the Stockport match. Uh, will be a wide open lane, so I'm gonna come in and we'll have some fun. Like I said it might be um might be uh you know. Fun for everyone for that ma for that matter. So, uh, but we'll do the game tomorrow. That's the lineup. Um, Kieran, uh, you're my guy. Uh, I'm anointing myself your older uh, brother at this point. So I need to. You need to go to bed. It's over. It's only two. It's only two. The night is still young. Yeah, but I, oh god, I wish, man. I, I wish. Uh, I'm, I'm putting. I'm. I'm going to put him well, under my I shoulder. I say the night is still young, as if I'm an exciting person that goes out. I'll probably be sat here. Typing up stuff on my buddy spreadsheet or something because that's about all my life is at the minute. <laughs> You're at uni. I am at uni. Yeah. However, we're planning on I'm planning on switching over to a different one come uh, come August September time. So there we are. What are we What are we study? Well, as of right now, I'm studying media production. So well, lovely you... drama and horrors and all that lovely mumbo. All right. Jumbo stuff, but with, I'm going on the sports media come uh, come August September time, which is probably a lot more down this avenue than uh, otherwise. <laughs> yeah. In all fairness, I didn't know it was uh, it was two a.m. until it was mentioned. So there we are. <laughs> God, dude, man, I'll see you get for no choice. No, you can come out anytime, man. All listen. If you uh, good night. Uh, love you both too. Stay uh, happy birthday. Good night. Uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, it's 2 a.m. Uh, so um, you and I will chat offline. If you need any help on anything uh, other than you know, bedtime stuff, 
uh, in regards to, uh, you know, late nights. It's all good. Uh, but it's good. You're, into, you're into sports and you're into writing. That's good. So awesome. Cool. Yeah. All right, Get some rest. You're done. It's over. K Rod. K Ron's done. It's over. K Ron's done for another day. All right. Cheers. Have a good night, man. I'll see you later. Of course. Cool. Take care, Rod. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. You too. You too. Take care. Take care. What just happened? That was fun. Uh, K-Ron, Pi, Pinup. Jesus Christ. All right. Night, night, night. Uh, later, fellas. All right. That was a long. That was two hours. Uh, we talked football for about 40 minutes of that, and then we talked crap uh, for the rest of it. Uh, okay. You got the lineup for tomorrow. Let me re rehash it. Early doors. Uh, I will start the live stream for the Wrexham Grimsby match about maybe 20 minutes earlier than we normally do. Catch the end of the, the Colchester Mansfield match, if it's interesting. Uh, Red Horde will be doing a, a live watch along for that, so go check him out on that. Uh, then afterwards, the, the, the post-90, I'll probably jump in on that a little bit, and then I'll go back to the Stockport and Kate Downs game, keep that open for everybody to come on and uh, have a good time, as we did tonight. So uh, it's been a fun evening. Please drop a like if you haven't already. It is, uh, it's been a good one. It's been, it's, it's been a good one. 202nd show uh, for the local pundit. Also, we are oh, 16 subscriber where yeah let's go we're army crawling through it thank you Kieran. thank you thank you um we're, you know we're trying to get the 500 which is great uh, that's a good goal and uh, tomorrow's a big day super saturday and um exciting, exciting stuff and that was friday night for everybody so i hope that everyone had a good time uh you know it's not uh it's it's you know i like to keep it light and um i appreciate everyone's insight and all everyone's chat and all that stuff so uh, I'm going to go, uh, go to bed so I can wake up tomorrow morning to watch the game. So on that bombshell, I'll see you all soon.